Hi, this is Steve Picaro, and you're listening to Backbeat. All music is the same. It's just a new set of lyrics and a new backbeat. Well, Steve, thanks a lot for taking time out of your busy schedule to have a chat today. It's my pleasure. Yeah, Andre Graziati here for the Backbeat Experience in a chat with Steve Porcaro of Toto. I read recent, recently there's, there's uh, actually your brother-in-law is doing a documentary on the Porcaro mm-hmm. brothers. He is. How, how fantastic is that? Well, you know, we had mixed feelings about it at first. I kind of wondered about it because they were, uh, um, I wasn't very comfortable with the idea initially. Um, but uh, now I've warmed up to it. Okay. And uh, now as long as I keep a healthy distance from it, you know what I mean? It's hard for me to be involved with something where they're talking about how great I am or something like that. You know what I mean? It's hard to be impartial when you're involved with it. Yeah. So I'm, I'm just supporting them, but from a, from a healthy distance. But I'm completely supporting the project and uh, giving it my blessing. Great. Well, the Pork Harrow musical legacy, uh, I know that uh, your brothers, they all have uh, children. You have uh, nieces and nephews. How will that... Uh, see itself out in the future as far as music goes yeah you know everybody is uh, finding their way I mean as you well know the music business is very different than it was when we were coming up oh, so <laughs> there's so much that we don't relate to you yeah. know what I mean uh, some of my nephews or nieces or, or even children or whatever will look to me and say so dad how do I you know navigate the music business now and I have no idea whatsoever uh-huh. you know what I mean uh, things have changed so much and the, the business as I knew it when I was coming up, doesn't even exist anymore. Right. You know, there's uh, so few sessions being done. Uh, um, it's just very different. Yeah. So, as far as musically speaking, how mm-hmm. are, are are they? So there are so so there are several uh, uh, um, nephews and nieces, and my daughter Heather has been an artist for for a very long time now, and and uh, you know has experienced the ups and downs of the music business, and uh, she's actually done a lot of the artwork on oh, our album, cool. on, uh, she did all the artwork on our last album, okay, and coordinated it and did all the photography on the album, and uh, she's like a renaissance woman. Um, my younger son and daughter, they seem to have no interest whatsoever in music right really? now. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, but I have nephews. i got a nephew who's a bass player. Mike's son Sam's a great bass player. Okay. Uh, Jeff's kids all play. They're all fantastic, and they all work on music, and everyone's doing what they can. Well, when you grew up with your brothers, uh, if, if I remember correctly, I think I think Mike said you guys all started off playing drums. Pretty much, yeah. So, and then he eventually went off to the bass, and then you went off to keyboards. Well, what happened was, you know, we all played drums, and then and then the Beatles came on the air. Right. We saw the Beatles on the Ed Sullivan Show. Probably at the same time that Steve did. <laughs> sure, at the same time. Everybody. I'm, I'm certain of it, yeah. you know what I mean? And it was just, it was a life-changing thing. And, and Mike and Jeff right away started taking guitar lessons. Okay. And, uh, you know, Jeff lasted maybe two or three lessons and, you know, he wasn't, you know, it wasn't for him. And he was, he was ready for a different yeah. beat. Well, he was already playing drums then. Okay. You know, he was already playing drums then. He'd won his kindergarten talent contest, you know what I mean? Playing uh, to Miles Davis's Bag's Groove. Um, but uh, uh, Mike kind of stuck with the guitar for a little while longer. But then a few years later, we moved to California and he kind of transferred it over to the bass. Okay. So yeah. How did you happen upon keyboards? It was kind of the only thing that was left really? you know, in the household. Yeah, I just remember them bringing home a piano one day, a small <laughs> spinet, and uh, I didn't even know if I wanted. I took a couple lessons, but I I, uh, I saw my dad play. He played piano for a student. He just played a simple blues, and I was like, where did I never saw him do that before? And I wanted to learn how to play that blues, and it kind of grew from there. Mm-hmm. You know? And then, I, I, of course, I got into be, bands like The Doors that featured keyboards, you know, in their mid-60s. Then, of course, I got way into, like, Emerson, like, and Paul. ELP, and, yeah. And the prog rock thing and all that, you know. And we were always big fans of studio musicians, mm-hmm. especially guys like Leon Russell and Larry Nechtel and Don Randy and all, all those uh, 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 wrecking crew keyboard players. Mm-hmm. And especially Leon, was a, I was a huge fan of his. Or if you said The, the Beatles, uh, Billy Preston. Sure. The fourth, the yeah. was it the fifth Beatles, so to speak? Yeah, yeah, we always loved Billy too. You also invented some musical equipment, didn't you? A drum oh, machine, I think you were working on. I didn't invent any. I, I was kind of around when tinkered. I was around when those things were being invented. Okay, you know what I mean. I don't take. Claim so did you to have a hand that. in that somewhere? Just you know, it was a very creative time. I was hanging right. out with guys like Roger Lynn, who invented the first drum machine and stuff like that. Okay, and we used to throw some ideas around, and uh, you know, um, 
But I wouldn't say I invented anything. I I I was around when a lot of a lot of us were putting two and two together, if you know what I mean. And uh, uh, being I had the resources I had through David Page's generosity and buying all this huge modular equipment and mm -hmm. all this stuff, I kind of was uh, 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 got into some things maybe a little sooner than some other people did. And and uh, but we've all kind of come to the same conclusions. So what was this picture of you standing in front of this? What's it called? Poly? Polyfusion. Yeah, Poly modular. Just big modular synthesizers. Huge. <laughs> you know, this is before MIDI. This is before they even had polyphonic synthesizers right. so much. And we just wanted to be able to have our sequencers, our, these, you know, these things that would play the synthesizers, have multiple voices. Okay. So the only way to do that would be to have multiple synthesizers. You'd have to have, if you had an ARP 2600, you'd just have to have one for every voice you wanted. Wow. So instead of that, we just had these big modular systems. So so then how has, from that time to now, how has then t technology changed? Has it oh, certainly to your advantage? Absolutely. I, I, uh, I love the new stuff. I love all the new technology. I, I, I'm thrilled with it. It's the stuff I always dreamed of. Now I, I you know, and a lot, of, a lot of people like to have that debate, you know, like say digital versus analog and, and what's better us. A synthesizer and software on a screen or the real thing what sounds better and, and a lot of people like to have those debates all I know is I'm able to work on a so sound now I can work on it for a week and I can hit save okay you know what I mean before so, when I did that that sound was gone forever so if you say debate digital or analog yeah digital absolutely digital, okay absolutely you like the sound of analog Digital is going to get, we already have knobs that will make it sound more like analog than analog okay if you like that kind of you know, distortion. Hey, I still know the difference between being able to hit tape real hard and, and you know what I mean? Yeah. What it sounds like and the natural compression that happens and how cool that is. Okay. You know, uh, uh, I, I get it, but it's, is it worth it to have to align a tape machine and hope that you're able to find the same kind of tape stock again and, and all the, all the stuff, is it better? Yeah, maybe right this second, but advantage, um, disadvantage, you know what I mean? In the 80s, you uh, you teamed up with uh, James Newton Howard mm -hmm. for the album and Friends, trying yes. out new instruments. Yes. Well, really what it was, was uh, uh, that was something we had put together for Yamaha, um, the three of us, David, James, and myself. We used mm -hmm. to call ourselves the Triumvirate. Okay. And we would demonstrate in return for getting free equipment from Yamaha, you know, and we kind of had an artist program. A great trade-off. <laughs> it was a great trade-off, and we would demonstrate these, we would demonstrate uh, uh, um these instruments yeah. and uh, um, they decided they wanted to uh, release someone a, a guy named Bill Schnee an engineer heard us mm -hmm. and, and wanted to record us and uh, we were under contract to uh, Columbia Records at the time as members of Toto mm -hmm. so uh, we were only allowed to record for Columbia Records no. so that's why I became James Newton Howard and Friends you know? I see yeah because that's that's a, not an easy album to find and it's not cheap either no no it isn't What's the advantage or the gratification in composing music for film? I know that you um, you left Toto and, and went to work mm -hmm. on uh, movies and TV mm -hmm. as opposed to a regular rock album. Yeah, you know, with uh, film, you don't have to worry about lyrics. True. You don't have to worry about going on the road. You're just part of a team of people. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, sometimes I like just being part of a team. I don't need to be the star of the show. It doesn't need to be everyone sitting there to listen to the music. I love being part of putting on a show uh -huh. and if that's just doing underscore and it's something I can do in my studio pretty much by myself uh, and uh, I love it I so just love the process I always wondered about that how do you how do you come up with stuff are you inspired by what you see or how does that work yeah very much so. I'm inspired by what I see a lot of times and and what the script is about and what the story is if it resonates with me and mm -hmm. and the particular scene you try to uh, you know give it deeper understanding give the characters you know uh, uh, somehow control the scope of the mm -hmm. thing, if it's supposed to be small or big, uh, you know, and uh, just enhance the scene with the music, kind of give it a connective tissue and yeah, can I imagine, do what music does. Imagine a movie without music, yes. it just wouldn't None work. None of us can. It doesn't work. None of us can. Anyway, I love being being part of a team. Yeah, great. Yeah. So um, I guess Mike was the defining factor for the reason that the, the band got back together mm -hmm. almost to, to what it was 35 years ago. Uh, are you staying in the band longer this time around? We'll see. Yeah, I hope so. I already have been. I've been doing it for, you know what I mean, I've, I've, all, I've already almost been doing it as long as I really? did in my initial run. Okay. Yeah. I was just with the band for the first six albums, really. And uh, I've been doing this now for about six years almost now. This will be our fifth or sixth year. So, 
hopefully he'll stick around. I, I love being part of it, but it's 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 one part of my life, you know. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm not a. Uh, uh, um, I don't want to be on the road all the time. No, some people like it, others don't. Oh, I like it, but not all the time. Not you know? all the time. You know, yeah. here and now and then. Yeah, no, I, and I like to, uh, another thing I like about, uh, you know, when you're working on film music is you have control mm -hmm. over the situation. Here, I have no control no. over what things are going to come out. Is the monitor going to be good tonight? Is here, that, it's Mother Nature, and she's, here she's mother, treating us well tonight. Tell me about it. Tell me um, about it. But it's different all the time. You know what I mean? And in the studio, I can have complete control over it. With so many talented and creative artists coming together for this album, now how difficult was it to put this together? You know, who was the referee? Then, you know, that would be CJ. You know, uh, CJ Vanston. CJ Vanston was, would be who you call the referee. Okay. Mildly. Now, CJ, being a great keyboard player, also brought a lot to the table musically himself, and right. had some had some good ideas synthesizer-wise. You know what I mean? And and keyboard-wise. So we all. You know, there were no rules. You know, that's what's great about everyone having their own studio. That's a plus side to everyone being able to do try out every idea they want to do. Mm -hmm. Everything they used to want to do where before when you had to do it in one studio with everyone standing there. You know, and if your idea happened to take a lot of time and maybe you wanted to write things out, people had no patience to sit around True. For that when we all used to produce ourselves. And uh, uh, now we can kind of go all go off to our corners and it's expected you're not being a renegade or a iconoclast by doing stuff like that. Mm -hmm. It's kind of what everybody does now. And, uh, um, you know, I would spend hours working on this stuff and it's just, you kind of throw a lot of things against the wall and see what sticks. See what sticks. <laughs> you know what I mean? And, th and those are the ones you go and bring to the guys and right. go, listen, what do you uh, think about this part here? Uh -huh. And sometimes it clashes with something they've already got or another idea someone had and you know what I mean? You, you try and figure it out and not get married to your ideas, you know mm. what I mean? Yeah, well, you need you need a, a, another person in there to be sort of yeah. like I said, the referee. Yeah, no, and we, and we do pretty good ourselves yeah. sometimes, but uh, it's nice to have someone else. Explain this one to me: keyboard, the synthesizers. What's the difference? There is none. Really. There is none. No, not no. I mean, but uh, um, sometimes synthesizers, if you're just playing them, if you're just playing the keyboards, right. that's fine. But sometimes with synthesizers, there's an element of synthesis involved. Okay. You know, which some guys choose to get into and some guys less than others, you know what I mean? That's something that I've chosen to get into quite a bit. So I'm doing a lot of, doing a lot of synthesizing. I'm not just playing the keyboard. Okay, really. because I was wondering, how do you how do you share that with David? You know, how do you guys do most that? Of synthesizing, you know what I mean? Okay. As far as the actual keyboard parts go, we've always, uh, we've always been very good at that. You know, David's always done the kind of meat and potato stuff. Piano, the basic Hammond, the basic... You know, especially if it's a song he wrote. And I was, I've was i always been the overdub guy and the guy to hear some extra sounds, arrangement and stuff like that. But yeah, when it's my song, uh, uh, mm -hmm. I'll usually play piano. You know what I mean? Or sometimes I'll even, because I know how solid David is as a player, uh, even when it's my song, I'll have him play the piano part. Because I just, he knows how to nail it better than anybody. Faster than I would, you know what I mean? I heard the, the story of, of how uh, human nature got to be. Which was by accident. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Best ones always are. Yeah, it's also, also like the songs that get uh, uh, written in 15 minutes. Yeah, uh, they're also yeah. the the big ones. But you got a track on this album, the little things. Mm -hmm. Two on the Japanese version. Oh, mm -hmm. well, I'd have to get a hold so of that. Ben. <laughs> really? Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a last minute edition. But uh, you, the little things. What yeah. What, what's that? What's that song about? There was just there was a song that was going to go on my solo album that I've been working on. Mm -hmm. I asked. Uh, uh, Ali Willis, lyricist, uh, a friend of mine, Greg Still, actually, music supervisor. I asked him if he knew any good lyricists, and he said, "How about Ali Willis, the one, the one and only Ali Willis? He knew how to get a hold of her." And I said, "I would love to try to write a song with her." And we got together, and I'd had this this motif that was actually started from a cue for the TV show I was working on, Justified, mm -hmm. and uh, we ran with it. And I kind of had the title, you know, the little things, and and uh, the concept of the song figured out, and she helped me. Make it a song, give it a give it a beginning and a middle and an end, mm -hmm. so to speak. Anything autobiographical in that? Sure. Yeah. Tons. Okay. Lots. If you could step into a musical time machine, where would you go and why? Oh, you know, I'd probably like to go to the future. Yeah. Really? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Absolutely. I can't wait. Um, I can't wait to see what's next. I can't wait to see stuff that assists purely talented people in uh -huh. realizing 
their ideas without having to go to a music school and, and having ways to uh, uh, enhance your talent and, and to bring out the best of you, you know? I think like the hat, the ultimate one would be the hat. Whatever you put the hat on and whatever you can hear, everyone else can hear it over the speakers. You really? Know? You're the first person I've ever, I've ever asked and said the future. Oh, hell yeah. Most people say the past. Oh, sure. I'm, well, that's, you know, that's obvious. That's, of course. <laughs> I would have loved to have been in the drawing room at Chopin or, you know what I mean, yeah. at the King's Court with Bach or uh -huh. Mozart playing for the, you know what I mean, uh, at that level when those guys were like they were. But I can't imagine. Here we are complaining about riding a bus with 20 other people for six hours. You know, can you imagine <clears throat> in the middle of winter going from Vienna to Paris in a coach, you know what I mean? Yeah. We got nothing to complain about. You know? No, I guess not. If you compare it to back in yeah. box time, yes, of course. But you say, okay, you mentioned the future. Um, now, upon uh, um, upon our passing, mm -hmm. um, do you think we're destined to meet again in the afterlife? I hope so. Yeah, I hope so. That's the you know, uh, um, you know, losing my brothers like I have. That's you know, one of the few comforting thoughts I can have about that. Mm -hmm. You know, is that. Uh, is that we'll be together again at some point, and that's what I, that's what I tell my children uh, when they worry about stuff like that. And so I, I can say, eh, I can honestly say that I hope it's true. Last thing, word association. Mm -hmm. What would be the first thing that comes to mind if I say vacation? Uh, studio. Really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. What would your wife say about that? I don't have a wife. Well, there you go. That solves that problem. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, let's see. Halloween. Hol most what? most vacate most holidays. Yes. I look forward to because the phone's going to ring less, and I'll be interrupted ah, less in the studio. Okay. So people just know, think that you're I, unavailable. You know, and I get to get some work done. Cool. Okay. No, I love to take vacations. A vacation for me is Hawaii. Okay. You know what I mean? If you've had ever had children and had to take them on vacation with you, I mean, I, it's great for the kids, but uh -huh. it's. For me, it, it doesn't resemble any kind of vacation. For you know what I'm saying. Uh, for me, a vacation, even with kids, would be lying on a beach in Hawaii. Right. Know, but I rarely get to do that. So yeah, most of us don't. <laughs> you know what I mean? Okay. Let's see. Halloween. Love Halloween. Love it. Love it. Uh, you want a word association? Uh, yeah. Halloween. Wow. Uh, kids. Okay. Real to real tape. Real to real tape. Oh boy. Real to real tape. Uh, Studer, a Studer half-inch two-track. Cool. Sports? Sports. Uh, I'm not a sports guy. No? Uh, I tried okay. over and over again in school. Anything not to practice, anything to avoid practicing piano. I tried basketball for years, baseball, football. I was terrible at it. Right. But you probably want to Even my friends now won't even play golf with me. Nothing. I won't. You know what I mean? Tennis or golf, you know what all my friends are into. I'm so. I guess you'll never get an invitation from Alice Cooper. I'll never get an invitation from Alice Cooper. <laughs> but you probably watch the Super Bowl. I'll... Yeah, I'm yeah. well occasion, but I usually fall asleep okay. or go do something else. <laughs> all right, last uh, but not least, technology. Technology. I'm in love with technology. I love technology. I love what it. Uh, uh, I love what it brings. I love the promise of it. I love. Uh, um, I love the ideas. I love seeing ideas come to fruition. I love taking it to the next level. You know, there there was, uh, uh, I just kind of got into it a little too early. You know what I mean? When you're into it as early as we were, you start you start putting two and two together. You mm -hmm. go, if this does this and this does this, why couldn't they? Go together. You join them together. And you found out the reason is, well, it's just, it's really very easy. There's a cable missing. There's a, <laughs> there's a cable missing that needs to be made. It's that simple. Right. Sometimes, especially yeah. in those days. You know, yeah, yeah. Pre-MIDI, everyone assumes all this stuff always spoke to each other so I spent a lot of time wanting to spread the word wanting to tell all these people don't you understand what's right under all our noses there but that time I now realize would have been better spent with me writing songs there was a whole uh. bunch of other guys doing the same thing at the same time reaching the same conclusions I was reaching you know other musicians yeah, yeah. who were in the sense and I didn't need to be spending that time doing it like at the time I felt like I needed to you know I knew this information and needed to share it with everybody. And it turns out there was a thousand other guys that knew the same stuff I did. You know, it's, okay. it's more about how you use it. Right. It's more about how you use it. I should have spent more time writing songs and using this stuff. Well, than, how, how... than spending, I would spend hours 
writing, you should have this feature and you should be able to do this and you should be able to do that. And by the time I'd hand it into them, they'd send me new software and it did all that stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. You know, and I spent all that time away from making music. Uh-huh. You know so, what I mean? So to how, tell do you, them stuff how do you think you are with. today as a, a songwriter? I think I'm better than ever. To be honest with you. Well, the little I, things, I feel little like things proves a, it. Little things and listen to the song Ben. That was also written very recently. But right. I think I'm writing my best stuff. Great. Personally. You know, I think I'm a late bloomer. Okay. Yeah. So are you releasing your uh, your so, your um, um I don't have a release date for so, for the solo album, but it's well, very, very well, close. no, what I'm what I'm getting at is do you also release your um, instrumental stuff mm, I haven't yet no but there might be some of that on my solo oh okay there might be some of that great well Steve thanks a lot very did you get good. enough stuff very I, I think so I think so